Good morning, everybody. We are the Patriots, and today's topic of discussion is discrimination. In specific, we will be discussing misogyny, divorced parents, sexism, and ableism. <clears throat> I would like to start off with misogyny. Misogynist is a person who dislikes, despises, or is strongly prejudiced against women. For example, about 4 in 10 working women in the United States states say they have faced discrimination on their jobs because of their gender. One of the stigmas is that women were expected to be passive, gentle, and caring, and often valued for how they looked and not what they did. Back in the day, women was not allowed to go into war because it was considered a man's job. But now we have women pilots and it's not considered for only men. Now women are allowed to go to war. Women are now allowed to do a lot of things they weren't able to do back in the day. So let's continue to give women the opportunities and freedom they deserve. Jazz, what do you think we can do as a community to resolve this issue? Um, I think the biggest thing is unity and being able to have understanding of each other and that, you know, it's not just one person's fault. Um, like, obviously, we can look at the oppressor side of it, men being the people who are upholding that system of misogyny, but we can also look at, you know, women who deal with internalized misogyny that they are that are kind of embedded into their brains at a young age because of the system that men have created and have been upholding for years so I think the biggest thing would just be to educate people at a young age um and just teach love and like you know this like kind of stray away from this idea of hatred and that we have to one person has to be bigger than the other or be more important because that's not the case. We're all people and we're all humans and we're all learning and loving and I think that's just something that we need to keep doing. Um, Andre, what do you think? Obviously, your perspective would be different because you are male presenting. You you benefit in some cases from this <coughs> system. So what do you think? Yeah, on, in my case, I think that men really need to just be taught at an early age that it's just irresponsible and not the right way to treat a woman mm -hmm. and like you need to be very respectful of everyone no matter what sex race or anything exactly, yeah. what do you think rihanna um i think to add on what you said i think also spreading awareness at a very young age would be like really beneficial to teaching people that this is wrong mm -hmm. like you like you want to teach a kid at a young age like a boy don't touch a girl's hair or pull it without her cons right. like without like, you don't need permission for it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you don't want them to do things that are wrong to women because you want to teach them that this is wrong and you shouldn't be doing it. Right. So I think teaching them at a young age would help less people in the future have these problems arise. Mm -hmm. I think we can start giving, like, open more doors f for females or women, especially kids, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of young girls who like to play football and are told that football are only for men mm -hmm. and that they're a girl and they can't do that. Only recently were women allowed to play football yes. <laughs> like at high schools. Right. So I think opening more doors and giving women a bigger opportunity, more opportunities, is what we can do as a community. Mm -hmm. Jazz, what is your topic of, of discrimination? <laughs> um... Kind of like misogyny, mine is sexism, but specifically in the workplace um, and business industries. Um, but yeah, by the definition, um, sexism is preju prejudice, <laughs> stereotyping, or discrimination, typically against women solely on the fact that they are a woman. Um, fun fact, <laughs> women are four times more likely than men to be discriminated in the workplace than men. That includes all minorities, so not just white women, not just black women, not just Latino women, all women of all colors and races. Um, so that's about 42% of all women in the United States who are being discriminated against every day in the workplace. That's insane. <laughs> um, some examples of this discrimination that happens in the workplace is lack of benefits, so things like 401k plans, um, health care. Quick question, what is a 401k four a 401k plan, um, it, it's a retirement plan so that, mm -hmm. you know, they can retire at an early age um, and be able to be good and set for life. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, just things like that, being able to have that advantage of, like, you know, you have a job, you get these benefits, 
you're set, you know what I mean? Um, and men get these things all the time. Why are women not getting the same things? Um, also things like opportunities for executive positions or in businesses like CEOs or, or managers or things like that. Um, and a lot of the time when women are CEOs, it's from companies that they've already built themselves. Like why do women need to make their own companies to have a, a good position in that company that should be given to them off, off, off the get-go? Um, and, and also just harassment of all kinds. It happens every single day in any kind of industry, um, not just business, but retail, fast food. Like, it happens every day. It's a constant thing that women have to deal with on a daily basis. Um, an example of um, women in politics specifically being discriminated against for their sex, um, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, she is a congresswoman who will be running in this next year's election. Very excited about that. Um, Constantly, whenever I see a video of her on the internet, she's being, like, degraded, and, like, like, they're they're trying to humiliate her, but it's not working, (laughs) Um, by these old white men who just want to bring her down because she's a woman and, like, make her think that she's small, but she's not. She's this powerful idol, and, yeah, she's just such a good example of resilience and, you know, perseverance and, like, a bright future that women can look at um, after having to go through these kind of, kind of things. Um, AJ, what, um, how do you think this problem can be resolved? I think it's definitely something that like there either needs to be laws set in place or mm. it's something that needs to be taught to everyone and made sure it's like a norm because everybody thinks it's just okay for men to like get more opportunities. Like there's a, there used to be a stigma where men would always go play golf and then that's how they would get their job. Mm -hmm. Like that was so crazy to me and I can't believe like that ever happened. It's so unfair. What do you think, Olivia? I think it also should start at a young age, you know, teaching, teaching young women that they are worth it and that they are powerful, especially what POC young women, you can Mm -hmm. teach them that their skin is very beautiful like just encouraging them basically letting them know that no one should have to force them to do anything no is no I've seen a lot of people in person say that women are belong in the kitchen Mm -hmm. that's not true you can go into war you can do football you can do basketball you do anything you want because at the end of the day it's your life Mm -hmm. and you control your life not anyone else it's literally your life and you do what you want with it right Mm -hmm. Rihanna, what do you think we can do to resolve this? I think definitely starting to teach about it at a young age is also very important. And we also shouldn't force stereotypes on people. Yes. Like, there were, like, I've heard people saying, like, oh, like, my dad's all drank beer in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Well, like, my mom was, like, working in the house or mm-hmm. working all the time. And I think even now there's more opportunities than we ever had before to work at both a home thanks to, you know, the pandemic happening and, like, Definitely, doing yeah. stuff in person. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of opportunities we can do. And we need to teach people that there's equal opportunities for everyone, regardless of your gender, if you're cis, trans, like, non-binary, anything. Whatever, yep. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> how I think we can resolve this problem Like I said before, just unity, like, it's all about unity when it comes to discrimination in general. Like, if we just are understanding of each other and we're listening and we're not just having a one-track mind, which I think is the biggest issue is just people having opinions and wanting to stick to those opinions, but your opinion isn't always right, you know, and you're allowed to have your own opinions, but, you know, if you only stick to those, you're never going to learn and grow as a person. So I think just being unified and being open and honest and you know, just genuine would, as a community, would definitely, but, like, that would help and benefit everyone. And I I honestly think it's a lesson that America still needs to improve upon. Like, we've come a long way, but we still need Mm -hmm. to improve on a lot. Definitely, yeah, I agree. But that's not, we all have to come together and do it. Right. Yeah. Like, we all have to have, a like, a positive mindset in order to do that. If we don't do it as a group, it'll never happen. Exactly. If not everyone, if not everyone is all in, then it's never going to happen. AJ, what's your topic of dis- discrimination? I wanted to talk about divorced parents and the way that it can affect um, their lives and their children's lives. Um, parents often divorce p- 
probably about 40% of marriages mm. end up in divorce. That's a lot. And 10% to 15% of those marriages have kids that end up having like split homes and it's it hurts them so bad. They get bullied at school for it. Mm -hmm. And like, it's all depending on the parents, you know? If right. the parents worked, they had communication, worked together and didn't want to like fight or didn't cheat, they would be happy. Mm -hmm. If they went to counseling, which has been working because right. from the uh, American Association of Marriage, 98% of marriages that went to counseling there succeeded. Out, yep. So like they really just need to work as a group and love each other because when, when you get into a marriage, it's not just a paper and a ring. It's mm -hmm. a binding and it's something that you should be bringing on for the rest of your life. There should be, like, an evaluation before you get married. Like, you have to be in there for, like, a certain amount of time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people just rush into it nowadays, yeah. and they don't really understand relationships and the meaning of a healthy relationship right. because so many people don't have healthy relationships for parents or siblings. They don't even realize it. Yeah, they don't. They just think it's normal because that's just how everyone has been raised. Right. Um, what do you think, Jasmine? Um, well, I've... Me, personally, I haven't experienced that, but i seen my friends go through it. Like, I've seen what it does to them and their mental health. Um, I think, like I said before, like, maybe, <laughs> like, I guess this seems kind of, like, funny or, like, kind of weird to, like, put, like, a limit on how fast you can get married. But it's obviously causing a problem when, when parents rush into these, like, relationships and then have kids and then don't think everything through. Um, but I don't know. I think it would just, you know... I don't know, like, I feel like all of the um, problem solving for all these is, like, young age, like, teaching people at a young age, because if you teach kids at a young age how to have a healthy relationship and how to cope and how to have healthy coping mechanisms and um, communicate your feelings, like, in a healthy way, like, if, we, if we're able to have all those coping skills and be able to be emotionally stable, that positively affects everything in your life including your relationship with other people and including relationships with your kids um so I think it just at a young age like teaching those things therapy like therapy ugh, don't even get me started on therapy but like therapy is so important and I think yeah just at a young age it, it being taught that like how to deal with your feelings and like how to communicate with others um yeah Liv, what, do, what do you think about this and like how it can be like resolved um, me personally, I do know what it feels like to have divorced parents, you know, going from home to home to home to home. It's very stressful. And then having to go out to school in a public place, putting on a smile for everyone, it's mm -hmm. really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think it is something that we can do, that we can teach children, start at a young age, teach them that no bullying. Because no you don't know, bullying, yeah. you don't know what's going on on the outside mm -hmm. like you may see you may see them smiling and stuff but really they have behind closed doors it's right and you don't know the effects that bullying could have on somebody like they could be smiling but on the inside they're right. like going through agony which is something that i went through for like a different reason mm -hmm. right i also think that this is also a community issue we all have to come together in order for this to end mm -hmm. like Divorced parents is not, it's not something that everybody goes through, but it is a big thing. And for adults, they do need to start thinking about the children mm -hmm. instead of, oh, I just want to end this, mm -hmm. da, da 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 No, it can affect the child too, and it can possibly lead to suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and more often than not, like, that influences the child's, like, aspect of marriage, and then they're never going to have a healthy relationship. Right. Right. It begins a cycle. It begins a cycle. And one thing I want to point out you said, though, is that, like, not everyone experiences it, but just because not everyone experiences it doesn't mean it's not as important. Right. And it's not something that should be talked about, you know? Right. Rihanna, what do you think? I think we, as it's really important to bring it up at a young age, but also the history of divorce and, like, on not just America, but everywhere in general, it was very, like, back in, like, 
the 1700s, like divorce was a big no-no, and often yeah. they favored the man. It was like, yeah. it was like looked down mm-hmm. upon. Right? At one point, it was illegal. Yeah, like, illegitimacy was like could like destroy your career. Mm-hmm. It was like it was like on like your reputation. It was like oh, they got divorced. And like, even in like the 1900s, when like when around when like the I don't know how to explain it, but no, you're good. there were people who would get divorced, like the man and the woman, and then they would favor the man who would oftentimes be drunk mm-hmm. and alcoholic, like abusive. abusive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's just not okay. So I think mm-hmm. we'll keep it in mind the history. We could find ways to improve by looking at the history. Mm-hmm. Another thing is don't try to, like, pick sides. like, Or don't make your kid pick sides. Right. Yeah. Don't, make your pi- don't make your kid choose which side to be on because – in reality, the kid had nothing to do with it. This is not Captain America Civil War. You can't right. just, you can't just <laughs> exactly. be like Team Cap or Team right. Iron Man. <laughs> no, that's so true. That's that so could true. just put so much weight on the like, child. Like you gotta keep it like right. Like keep your personal stuff away from your kid. Because right. at the end of the day, like it's gonna project onto them and make everything worse. And people yeah. don't realize that the smallest things can lead to depression. Big feelings. Right. Yeah. Or like anxiety, like will this relationship work? Right. right. Rihanna, what's your topic of discrimination? I am talking about ableism. Mm-hmm. Can you explain what ableism is? Yes, I can. So ableism, by definition, is discrimination in favor of able-bodied people. So it's people who are in favor of someone who is neurotypical over someone who is neurodivergent. Okay. What are some examples of this? Some examples of ableism can be believing people with disabilities have less value and worth, assuming that they want to be healed or cured and said and overcome a disability, um, suggesting that they're ins- inspirational for just doing basic everyday activities that normal people, like neurotypical people, already do, mm, like like putting making them like an example of like a success you know, like, story. Like, oh, this person like did all these things, and you should follow it. When sometimes people can't do that they're just normal people Mm. assuming they live an unhappy limited life because of their disability Mm. assuming they can't do things for themselves or automatically like doing it for them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's about all the examples i have but Mm, okay i'm sure there's many more probably yeah um are there ways that you think that ableism can be solved Yes, I do. I believe that providing equal opportunities for someone in the workplace, for example, or school, would make it even more memorable for them. Because memorable for them, because as someone who's personally, I personally been bullied for just telling people I'm autistic, and it's mm. been really severe. Mm-hmm. So I think that people just being like supportive and nice and the understanding of someone's disability would be like m- life changing for me because mm-hmm. the only like you guys are supportive and like my family's supportive but like I've encountered people who aren't as supportive about it I also think that being provided more equal equal opportunities in the workplace would help those who may have difficulty with like getting like independent for the first time mm-hmm. and also having a disability would help them slowly learn it and they can combat like stereotypes that are innate like nature ableist like we don't want to show the Sheldon Cooper stereotype or mm-hmm. saying like you can't or saying like like autism I'll use autism example because I have it it's a spectrum so it's kind of like a circle mm-hmm. but everyone believes it's like a straight line so like the left is like mild and the right is like severe mm-hmm. usually when it's portrayed on tv you have you either have someone who's like a savant like Sheldon Cooper mm-hmm. or severe or like Nonverbal, and it's usually in kids shows nowadays Mm -hmm. and they don't show the autistic character's perspective right they only show what we see and what we like or they have like i remember i saw a clip from like this fancy nancy show where the kid was autistic and she kept saying oh he's probably artistic and the kid had to explain no he's autistic it was like his cousin and i feel like we don't have a lot of hyper verbal characters with autism Mm -hmm. it's never like in the middle or yeah it's probably because they assume that like all people with autism are these nonverbal kids who like can't communicate and like can't do anything by themselves but that's simply not true there's a plenty of people with autism who are very i don't want to use the word high functioning because that, that's like not mm-hmm. cool to use but like that's the best way i can explain it um who like 
are like, successful and can like do things by themselves and you know and like they just assume that they're like these people that can't do anything for themselves and that's simply not true they're amazing people with amazing minds mm-hmm. AJ what do you think could be ways to help solve this I think it's definitely something that sh- everybody just needs to be informed because it's something that can be invisible and not everybody can see or it's something that Visual. you don't talk about like everybody needs to know the different types and how to combat, like how to help them and not to judge them because anything is possible. Mm-hmm. You have not stepped in their shoes, so why should you be judging them? Exactly. What do you think, Olivia? I think, again, because all of this ties back to teaching them young. Mm-hmm. I think we could, you know, let them know that just because someone is different or they don't act the same way as you do or they don't look the same as you do doesn't mean that you can just treat anybody any old kind of way that you can say anything you want you know people still have feelings people who think different still have feelings Mm -hmm. everybody has feelings like I personally remember in middle school that was one of those toughest because you couldn't really teach them about Mm -hmm. it like autism as a whole mm-hmm. and I remember I personally got called the R word in a very offensive mm-hmm. way like why are you like and that's still R used word? very frequently right. and people don't understand that it's not supposed to be used frequently right yeah and this also can tie back to what the parents do because mm-hmm. you know when people are young they they look up to the parents mm-hmm. whatever their parents do they do like like if the parents said something like oh d- I'll use a random name like don't Go to, don't play with Charlie. He's mm-hmm. weird. You're gonna think mm-hmm. that Charlie's weird, weird. but he's probably right. just autistic. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, I think we could just, and this is also another thing that we can do as community, is just make make them feel loved. Make them feel like Welcome. they yeah like yeah. they're supposed to be here. I think another oh, sorry for interrupting. I think mm-hmm. a lot another thing that can help kids learn more about this is putting them in cartoons like. Mm-hmm. I, Bluey is Repre- a new cartoon. Representation. It's literally yes. like combating certain issues. Like there was a kid on the show that had like ADHD. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God. That's literally how I was when I was a kid. Right. And you don't see that in shows from Bluey. like 10 years ago. Yeah. Give it, like giving them more opportunities. I agree. Yeah. Jasmine, oh. what do you think about this? I'm so sorry. Good. Um, I think... One big thing that I've noticed, because um, I have a little brother who has autism, and um, one thing that I, you know, obviously my whole life I'm going to protect him, and, like, you know, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, you can't protect people from everything, and, like, you can't, you got to treat them like people and not like their diagnosis. Treat the person, not the diagnosis, because at the end of the day, they're not just autistic they're a person and don't um, and don't infantize them infantize exactly like either. don't treat them like they're like they can't do anything you know like my brother is so smart and he's so funny and he's kind of annoying um <laughs> but you know he just um not even just him but just uh, other kids that I've met who have autism um a, a lot of times their parents treat them like you know they kind of baby them and they are so much more than their diagnosis and that's something that I think we all need to realize is that Yes, this person, it's the person with autism, not the autistic person, you know. Um, but, yeah, I think we just need to be more understanding and put, and think of people as people, not just as what you, what they tell you they are. Yeah, they need a, they okay. used to have a, a lot of different um, uh, areas where those people could get opportunities for jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, we had Puzzles Cafe right down the yeah, street. Yeah, I go, I, I literally went, it was on my birthday, it was, like, a tradition for the last couple of years where mm-hmm. we would go to Puzzles and get, like, those puzzle piece cookies. Because mm-hmm. my mom and I really identify with the puzzle piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they closed it. Like, oh, I wanted God. to open so badly. To add on to what you were saying, Jazz, um, it's a popular saying, don't judge a book by its cover. And it's so true, yes. and it reigns true to everything. Yes, because just because you see them on the outside, you don't know what they are capable of on the inside. Or like even with like kind of like the opposite way, just because you see them like smiling and happy doesn't mean you can't like right. predict that they're gonna like m- like melt down. Right. You never know what somebody's thinking. Mm-hmm. Same with bullying. Some bullies they bully because of stuff that they have going on. Mm-hmm. So. 
that doesn't mean it's right there bullying, right. but that is an explanation and right. reason, and, and it's like embedded into why they act the way that they act. Well, bullying, yes. bullying a kid just because you find out they're different is not okay, and I've right. literally absolutely. gone through years of that, and I still have to work through it. Right, absolutely. Um, in conclusion, discrimination is embedded into our society. However, if we all work together, we can find a way to help combat this issue. Thank you for listening. We are the Patriots, and we hope to see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.